Good evening, this is What's Going On, I'm John Lee. Our guest this evening is Mike Nolan. Mike is a candidate for the Davis School Board. That election is on the 4th of November. Mike, I wanna thank you for being on our show. Well, thank you very much. Happy to be here. Good. So, um, about 25 years ago, you were on this track in your life and, and you were bound and determined to fulfill all of your life goals and all of a sudden something changed. Tell us how you met your wife. I met my wife in my uh, law office. We had a friend who said, uh, 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 I know this young woman who was going to go to law school and she should talk to a new attorney and see what it's all about. And so she came in and I was happy. We went out to lunch and uh, I did my best to talk her out of it. And uh, she did not take my advice and she's become a great lawyer. And uh, we fell in love and the rest has just gotten better. So, okay, go back to before then. Where'd you grow up? I was born in San Luis Obispo. Uh, I grew up uh, outside of town in a, on a small ranch and we had a big family. My dad taught state and local government at Cal Poly. Uh, my mom stayed at home and took care of the kids. Uh, the, um, uh, I went to school there in, uh, and then uh, attended Cal Poly. And uh, growing up in San Luis, I wanted to get the experience of living in a big city, so I transferred and graduated from the University of San Francisco. And from there, I went to law school down in San Diego, Western uh, State University. And I went back to San Luis uh, to uh, practice law. So why did you decide to become a lawyer? Uh, the best um, explanation I can say is that uh, law gives you an ability to help people. It gives you an ability to uh, look at both sides of an issue. That uh, uh, to, be, to be an effective lawyer, you really have to understand not only what your client wants done, but also understand why the opposing side is, um, is opposing you and try to balance both of those, try to see the, the, the good and bad on both sides of the argument. So it, um, uh, the bottom line was I thought that I could help. I thought I could, uh, I thought I could be a good lawyer. And I, my best friend uh, had gone to law school down in San Diego and he had encouraged me to do so. So I, uh, I followed him down there. So what do you like about being a lawyer? Uh, the worst thing about being a lawyer, I'll start back. Okay, good. Is you deal with all these lawyers. <laughs> the, uh, it's a, um, it can get into a very uh, Alice in Wonder-like kind of world. The, uh, the best part about it is when you're able to uh, listen to just an ordinary person who has a problem and you're able to uh, help them. Either it could be anything from a, a traffic violation or a, 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 a domestic matter or um, uh, anything that affects human beings in our system. And maybe you can help them and uh, make them uh, realize. And often you, often you see people when life or fate has really hit them hard and they really need someone to uh, talk to and, and uh, help them back up, pull them back up and say, no, this, we can get over these problems and uh, push them on, uh, help them get over that, uh, the obstacles of life and proceed with their life. So what does your wife do now? My wife is a general counsel for Covered California. That's the uh, affordable, under the, uh, the ben Health Benefit Exchange for California under the Affordable Care Act. She uh, uh, has been doing that for almost uh, 18 months. She works very hard. If uh, the uh, Covered California uh, uh, has been successful, it's only because people like her have been working very, very hard. She leaves early, early in the morning and comes in late at night. And the, um, before that, she was uh, general counsel for the Department of Public Health. And uh, she did that for uh, a couple of years. And uh, uh, before that, she had been uh, chief counsel for the Department of Corrections. Before that, she was a deputy county counsel in uh, Solano County. 
and she dealt with uh, uh, tr child protective services and um, represented the sheriff's department, a number of different departments there. So how long have you lived in Davis? Since 1998. My father died in San Luis Obispo. Uh, my, uh, uh, we were living at the time in Fairfield, and my mother uh, came up to live with us, and we decided that we needed a bigger house, and we always liked Davis. We'd always uh, been, uh, it, was a, it was a really nice town. So uh, we found a place to move in. So we had uh, uh, my wife, my mother, and our four kids. Well, that's my second question. So talk about your four kids. My oldest is uh, Tom Nolan. Uh, he is, uh, he uh, studies at uh, Kasumnas River uh, Junior College. He plays soccer there. He uh, 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 was on the uh, Davis High School soccer team and was very, uh, very uh, uh, a proud member of that team. The, um, he was, uh, uh, he, I remember he, we started him at uh, Davis Parent Nursery School and uh, he went through and graduated in 2011. Uh, uh, and, or 2012. From Davis High. From Davis High. We went to neighborhood schools. His uh, second son, uh, sec my second son is Daniel, who is uh, two years younger than Tom, but one year younger in, in grade. And he graduated uh, last year in 2013, and he, he is uh, in um, uh, Woodland Community College. And my daughter, Emily, is a senior now at the uh, high school. And she is uh, getting ready to make, get her applications out to different universities. And my uh, youngest son is Kieran Nolan. He's a ninth grader in, uh, at um, Emerson Junior High. So what kind of things are they interested in? Soccer. They're very interested. All of them football, have played soccer. Football, football. Uh, 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 associated football. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what soccer means, is yes. associated football. <laughs> that's a, a, an Americanization of a British word. That's correct. <laughs> so that's, that's half of what I know about soccer. Um, or football, as they call it around the world. Foosball, foosball. Um, My kids were interested in uh, Little League. They played, uh, the oldest two played all the way through till they couldn't play anymore. They were too old. But the youngest two, they, they quit at, at a certain stage. They just, they thought it was too boring. So what do you think they want to do when they grow up? My, all four of them? Each of them, yes. Uh, my son, Tom, uh, wants to, uh, is, uh, he picked this up at elementary school at Willett. He is totally committed to understanding meteorology and weather patterns. Um, he uh, constantly will turn on the weather channel and uh, tape it for hours and hours just to see what's going on. That's and, great. Well, he has, so he has this, uh, he, uh, he, this interest, I could see it develop in elementary school. And he got so uh, interested in it. And, and the school was so good at getting him. Robert Willow would be excited to hear this story. Go ahead. <laughs> well, it got him so interested that he um, began to catalog every hurricane that landed in the United States. And uh, in the last 100, 200 years. And I wanted to, we were driving someplace to a soccer game, and I wanted to test him if, when he was in high school, see if he understood, and see if he really did this, because uh, he had binders full. So, well, uh, Tom, uh, what category storm was Hurricane Betsy? And because I remember Betsy from my grandparents had lived in New Orleans, and that had hit in the 19, early 1960s. And the, uh, his response was very interesting. He said, well, Dad, that's a trick question. There are five hurricanes named Betsy. Which one are you talking about? So, well, uh, you should have named them all then. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, yeah, he's very committed. And I, it's funny, my, uh, his mother and I look at him, and uh, there's certain aspects of your children where you see, and you say, where did he get that from? Not from me and not from you. <laughs> well, no, no. I, actually, the, uh, the, the best part about being, going back to the best part about being a lawyer, for me, it was going into the um, law library and just going through the cases 
back and back and back and dr when you had an issue or a problem and drilling down to where the idea or where the concept came from. And um, uh, that's always the most exciting. To me, that was always the most exciting part. And uh, Tom is that same way. He wa doesn't want to just understand hurricanes. He wants to understand every hurricane that ever hit. So when he's, um, he's become quite, quite good at that. My son Daniel is, uh, 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 I think he probably would like to go into uh, government, politics in a way, of, uh, or, or public administration. Kind of like his grandfather. Yes, you know. I was looking at my great-grandfather, actually, and saw his obituary back in Wisconsin and how he was the town supervisor and had, had uh, uh, held a number of local public offices. So. Uh, my son Daniel has this, he has a, he has a gift or, or a knack for politics that again developed at, um, at Willett when he managed his best friend's campaign for uh, 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 class president in their, in their sixth grade class. Well, everybody that's good has a lot of people supporting them to make them become visible. It's not something that you do alone. That's no, true. True. So Emily. Emily is uh, uh, she uh, is um, uh, I think and I, I don't know she's cons because we live outside town uh, outside of the city we don't get public access television so I can actually tell you about this and be confident they won't see this show the <laughs> until I show it to them but that's a different matter so go ahead. <laughs> but I think she has uh, she has a. Uh, uh, interesting uh, background in the sense where she, she likes to look at both sides of an issue and she's very analytical and I would predict law school for her. She may be, as much as she might protest about it, she, has a, she would be a very good lawyer. I could see that happening. The protest part goes with it. Yeah, protest I, part I goes mean, with being, it. I like to say, you know, uh, Descartes was not Cartesian. <laughs> Descartes thought outside of the box all the time. He, he was not rigid. He, he had the ability to think about not thinking. I mean, I think therefore I am. He could not think and be. I mean, he understood being this a lot better than people assume. And the, well, let me say, the last, last, our last child, Kieran, is, uh, he is a very quiet and very uh, deep thinker type of kid. Very... Uh, uh, he plays soccer, very good player, but he's always watching. The, there's, some, there's some players that just play, and then there's other players that are watching the game, waiting to see how things develop. So what position does he play? He plays stopper. Very so good. goalie? No, no, not goalie. So he's a defender? He's a defender. No, that's what makes sense. That, I would have guessed defender. That's right. I mean, they, you know. Um, My daughter Emily, she plays keeper. And she's an excellent keeper, but she's also forward. So she's been on teams where not only would she play half the game forward, uh, uh, but then the other half as keeper. And so, she, and she would always uh, want to keep track of how many goals she scored versus how many goals were scored against her. Well, you want to have zero in the second category. You want to have a lot in the first category. So there, there are very different kinds of numbers. <laughs> I mean, if, if there are sh 10 shots on goal and you stop six of them, that's a lousy game. If there are 20 shots on goal and you only went, let one goal score, that's a great game. I mean, it's, it's, but the other thing is that it, you completely psychologically attack the other team when you go from being the goalie to being on the aggressor and trying to score on the other side. If you're, if you're, go ahead. Go well, ahead. she understands the, the, the opposing keepers. Exa she well, she understands the opposing at. team. Right. I mean, she's, when you're, I mean, you're like the catcher on the basket, on the, the baseball game. I mean, you've got to run the whole, you've got to know what everybody else is doing on your team and what the other team is doing to try and screw them up. And what I want to say is one reason why I'm running for the board is that I've been able to see my kids develop in such a great way from the school system. And I, I can't imagine what they, what, how their lives would have been if they had gone to a different, different school system, a different district, if we'd stayed in Fairfield. Um, this, uh, the school system here really challenged them and allows, allows them all to uh, uh, blossom or find their areas of expertise. And I think that's really important and that's what makes our district special. 
because so often the uh, education uh, has been limited or the other districts don't have music they don't have drama they've they've focused down to a very narrow uh, a core of uh, subjects that can be you know for standardized testing and uh, Davis were very lucky very fortunate that we have this um, uh, a, a school system that allows people to develop uh, their full potential we're going to get to money in a minute, but Davis pays for that. Right. I mean, Serrano Priest was just before Prop 13, and it completely screwed up the financing for this, the state school system. And then Prop 13 made everything screwy. And then since then, we've had a bunch of different kinds of taxes. We'll get into that towards the end of the interview. So um, anything else you want to say in, as a way of introduction? Your wife, your kids. The, the oh, the, well, the only other introduction is that uh, uh, we made the decision uh, uh, about 20 years ago that I would stay home and take care of the kids, and so I became the homemaker basically. And I, that was, and I, I actually ended up being a pretty good cook for certain circumstances. And then I've got a, a killer recipe for chocolate chip cookies. But the point is that we have a. Um, uh, that allowed me to get involved in my children's school. And that was um, the most rewarding and educational experience of my life, is to see. I had only had a vague idea. I just remembered going to school back in the, in the 60s and 70s. But to, to be involved in our local schools and some of the finest people I've met are the parents who really sacrifice for their kids and who volunteer in, uh, uh, on PTA or site council. And I could see just really give total effort for their kids. And the uh, teachers, the, the, so many of them just, uh, just outstanding, uh, that uh, just worked and worked and worked to bring their, not just the individual kids, but the whole class through. And I, I, I really, uh, uh, my admiration is, well, it, it was, is tremendous for that. So talk about the difference between the site council and the PTA. Uh, the PTA is a voluntary organization. It's open to any parent. Uh, you pay your dues. Uh, the, the primary function is you have a PTA board, sort of a, everybody breaks up a different responsibilities. The, um, you have your budget, and you work in tandem with the principal and the teachers to support your school. Uh, through fundraising or uh, other other activities that your teacher uh, or principals need, the important thing is it's a grassroots effort. The site council is a committee made up of the principal, a staff member, teachers, and parents that are elected by the other parents. And the education code provides for the um, uh, that the site council can uh, develop a school improvement plan for every site once a year that has to be approved by the district. And there are times, uh, traditionally, there was uh, money allocated for the site council that the site councils could then spend to um, uh, enhance the, that particular school. So in, in other words, it was much more, uh, instead of being a one size fits all, this was an ability where the people in the school could say, look, we need something special here. And every school, and so it's a school site. Every, every school can be different and makes it different choices. Um, Willett, for instance, always focused on a reading program. And so they, we could hire more reading specialists to help kids. Uh, that was always considered. When I was president of the site council, we also said, well, we should do something about mathematics. How can we focus our, uh, put in our site plan, how we want to help with, uh, kids to raise their uh, instruction in mathematics. And the important thing with the site plan was to draft it so that, because you never knew if money was going to be available, but you wanted it broad enough that if resources came available, you could say, here, this is, this, we can spend these resources on this. Good. So the first half of this interview has been about what you care about. Now we're moving into why you're running for office. So. For the last nine years, we've had a click on the school board. You know the high school click? Well, Gina and Sheila and Richard and Tim, who I like, and Susan 
have pretty much run the school district for themselves. So I'm not going to be any worse than that. I have more to say, but I'll, I'll hold it to that. So what do you not like about how the school board works now, and how would you be different, and how would the school board work different than? Well, I, think, I think your comments are a bit extreme on that. Uh, I, I don't know whether they've, um, and let me put it this way, that I like all the members of the I school board. I do too. And uh, they're all, uh, they're good people, and they do their best. The, um, my criticism of the board has been that the, um, too often it seems that uh, there is a decision-making process that's not transparent, that there, is a, that there is a focus to make a decision and then have a public hearing. And it's just not, that's just the way school boards tend to operate in the state. And uh, the, um, in, our di in our school district, we need a more transparent uh, method of decision-making where we have the, uh, the, the school board members hold off from making a final decision or any decision until they hear both sides of the story or, and, and ask for, you know, what are the pros and cons of this decision? Um, it, when I was PTA president, you could see that, for instance, they had a, a boundary change commission and they were working on changing boundaries. And so as you followed it, it went on and on. They had hearings, and it went on and on. And then, just before Christmas, a whole new proposal came out from nowhere that directly affected the school I was at. And it was like, where did this come from? And all of a sudden, it seemed like the decision had been made. So then we were going to have a public hearing. And the problem then is you don't, you're not trying to convince an open mind. You're trying to, you're trying to talk to somebody who's uh, is, is leaning the other way, and you have to talk them out of it. And so it becomes, and then it becomes much more, oh, how can we compromise this? How can we make a, a, a split the baby in two? And the, um, uh, too often, uh, the other example, of course, was the, if during the financial crisis, we had, uh, we had fundraising activity. The parents are all involved in that. We had two parcel taxes. Campaigns and we all the parents worked really hard. You know, we passed one and then we found out that the state pulled back funding. We had to get another one for supplemental funding. So the parents really worked really hard. This the budget was uh, really in danger. A lot of teachers, a lot of programs, and uh, we all came through. The, the, we, we, the, the, the voters came through, uh, and the people donating money came through, and it was a great success. And in that, we felt all very good, we had, and we were exhausted as parents. And then the next item the school board decides is, well, maybe this is a good time to talk about closing one of the uh, junior highs and sending all the ninth graders to the high school. And this, I mean, what the parents and what the community needed was just a, a, to a stable, just that we had been working so hard to, to realize, okay, the crisis has passed, now let's uh, gather and let's, let's proceed. But all of a sudden we had another crisis that just came out of left field. And, uh, and it was, um, so you had, uh, again, parents turning out uh, to, to say, argue why that wasn't a good idea. So quickly, what are three issues you're running on? I think that we need an open, a more open board. I think that the board has to adopt um, uh, policies that encourage public confidence. Uh, the board, uh, our, our, our school district depends on a consensus of the community uh, to, uh, finance, to finance our extra, extra programs. We're not like almost, almost all the other school districts in the state are just a majority rule district because uh, they can never pass a parcel tax. In our community, we can't afford that. We need a consensus of two-thirds at the minimum to, to keep our schools as, uh, as well as they're going. So to get this consensus of community, we have to hold our school board to a higher standard than other, other places. So I would say uh, a, a stronger conflict of interest code, which makes it explicit that, uh, th that personal or financial uh, uh, conflicts that a board member can't have anything to do with a not just voting, abstaining from voting, but you can't participate, you can't influence in any way 
uh, the decision of the board. Uh, the other, uh, uh, the, the important thing is to look at issues as they come up with an open mind and to let the people know that you are listening to the parents, to the teachers, to, to the taxpayers, to the people who don't have kids in the school, that, you listen, that you're listening to the community and that uh, together we can find a consensus and move forward. So there's a parcel tax. Y uh, yes, there's. Coming up. Well, there's, there's two that expire at the, in 2017 that will have to be renewed in the next uh, two years. And what's your position on that? I think the, uh, uh, they have to be renewed because the, uh, uh, the state finance is so convoluted and complicated. Uh, there's a thousand school districts in the state, but they're not treated equally. And the um, funding from the state is directed towards the urban districts, and it's not directed to places like Davis. And so we have to, uh, as, uh, uh, we need to, we have to tax ourselves more, sacrifice more, in order to maintain a, a, a level of education. So my my idea with the parcel tax is, look at the uh, uh, of what's being funded and. Uh, go to the community and say, this is what we need. Uh, too often what's bothered me is uh, the, the, the old board would run a poll and they would ask, what can we get? Right. And it reminded me of my kids who I, at the end of the year, I think one of them said, Dad, you owe some money for, the, for, for lunch. And I said, why? I give, I, every time you needed to buy lunch, I gave it to you. What was the problem? And he said, well, if lunch cost two twenty-five. You only gave me $2. So, but why didn't you ask for 225? And he said, because I didn't think you'd give me anything more. And so the, he, he was asking me how much he thought I would give right. without, without trusting me to say 225, yes, of course. If I that's what you that. need. If that's what you need, that's what you get. And so I think that if we are honest with the, and transparent with the uh, community, uh, the community will step up and give us what we need. Okay, Mike, let's talk about your campaign literature. You know, this has got to be the most efficient thing I've ever seen. Your whole campaign is on this business card. So let's just see, is it effective? That's the question. I'm interested in results. So the first thing it says is you're endorsed by the Davis teachers. Then it's got your name and that you're running for Davis School Trustee, and it says you're qualified by experience. Your quote is, we should expect as much from our school board as we do from our schools. OK, so then it's got your website and your phone number. On the other side, you've got your experience. So you're on the Superintendent's Parent Advisory Committee for five years. You've been president of a school PTA. You've been president of a site council. You've been a school positive climate committee member for six years. You've been a classroom reading and PE parent volunteer. We need more of those. You've been uh, in on district and school hiring interview committees. So it sounds like you really do know something about the Davis School District. And you've gone from pre-kindergarten as a parent all the way through Davis High School graduation. And you're a member of the public law section for the California State Bar. That's right. So I want to thank you for being on our show. Thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure. Well, I hope you work hard. <laughs> I'll try to. I'll try to earn your trust. So I'm voting for Mike Nolan, and I hope you do too. This is what's going on. Thanks for watching. Good evening.